I recommend Sutera to not only growers and colleagues here in the Central Valley of California, but to other growers across the world. They offer top quality products to help you grow and sustain a healthy crop. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Andreas Westfall, a nematologist from the UC uh, Riverside, based at the Kearney Ag Center, wanted to, to talk today specifically about fumigation. You know, nematodes are a real problem in, in soils around the state. You know, those that are considering, they've taken out their orchard and are getting ready to replant, uh, considering fumigation. You know, what are some things that they, they should be thinking about, whether they should fumigate or not? Um, what can you tell us? Yeah, well, thank you very much, Malcolm, and welcome, everybody. Yes, uh, soil fumigation is a big decision to be made. Yes, it's very costly, and people try to shy away from that at times. But it really should be a more objective uh, decision-making process, meaning you need to take your soil sample, know your field, take soil samples, observe your crop before you pull it out, especially if you buy uh, the neighbor's field or grow some ground where you have not much experience with, you really should take soil samples um, to determine how many nematodes are there and which nematodes are there. Because although, talking about almonds now, we don't have um, resistance against all the nematodes, we have some help for some of the species out there. And if uh, you know your key nematode that causes the trouble, you have uh, already some options available to try to mitigate the problem that way. So best is, uh, like always, planning. Planning goes a long way. So if you know that you want to maybe pull an orchard out, it's a good idea to take your soil samples in March of that year, for example, rather than in August when the soil has been baking in the sun already. So the heat will not eliminate the nematode. It could reduce the number severely in the upper foot or so. And now you're stuck with uh, taking soil samples deep in soil in the middle of August, which is not fun to begin with, to take soil samples at that time. So it's really good to plan, take your soil samples out of the root zone best, or where the young roots are, but it is important to plan. And then from there on out, you can make your fumigation decisions, which need to be coupled with your root stock choices after. But to learn more about that, you can visit my webinar being uh, aired on November 16, where I will talk about these different uh, things on the UC Ag Expert talk series. You can easily find that online. Yeah, and Andreas, for growers that, you know, with the drought, you know, they may not want to replant right away, right? So if they end up fallowing the land for some time, is that going to mitigate the problems of nematodes if your soil is just bare for so long? That's an excellent question, but uh, with fallow alone to really reduce your nematode numbers severely is a tricky undertaking. So it's not going to be that one year of fallow has magically let the nematodes disappear because a lot of them can uh, survive in root pieces that remain in the soil, especially root knot nematode can uh, survive very long. On grape roots, for example, my predecessor Mike McHenry found that after eight years of the vineyard being removed, he could still find live nematodes in old uh, root pieces of grape. So that alone is not going to be good enough to reduce your numbers. So that's why it's so important to take your soil sample. That's why it's so important to know crop history in the field and uh, be vigilant about that. Well, thank you so much, Andreas. Uh, look forward to that webinar and read more about these things in our publications. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.